Welcome back. Tampa is a city rich in its diverse history. Neighborhoods like Tampa Heights and Ybor City are filled with African-American culture, but urban growth is changing the face of those neighborhoods. Gentrification is forcing residents out of neighborhoods they've called home for years, and some people fear it will only be more difficult to keep their homes. ABC Action News reporter Mason Murrow goes in-depth to show us the impact of gentrification in Tampa and how some think it can be solved. It's sad to see. I think you... Um uh, the culture of the community changes a little bit every time. The city of Tampa is one built on its diverse culture. According to the U.S. Census, over half of Tampa residents are African American and Hispanic. We don't want to lose that. We need to protect that. That's part of who we are. Some fear that minority representation is trending in the wrong direction, especially when it comes to housing. It's a scary situation. Hayes Triplett is seven years into trying to solve the affordable housing crisis in Hillsborough County. She she says the need for affordable housing grows by the day and the price to find a home in Tampa is costlier than ever. According to Zillow, the average price to buy a home in Tampa is nearly $366,000, up 31% from January of 2021. It's even pricier in historically black neighborhoods like Tampa Heights, where Realtor.com lists the average home on the market at half a million dollars. I think we're getting away from having some diversity as we move people that have historically lived in those areas. It's a perfect storm for gentrification right now in Tampa. Tony Kroll lives and works in the heart of Tampa Heights. The artist started Bloom on Franklin, a monthly event to promote black-owned businesses in the area's historic business district and keep its roots from being weeded out. This whole corridor that used to have trolleys running on it served the diverse neighborhood of Tampa Heights. This interstate disconnected the neighborhood and now you don't have a reason for people to walk from the neighborhood or hop on a trolley because it doesn't exist to come to this business district. That was where a lot of the formerly enslaved moved when they were emancipated. That neighborhood is gone due to gentrification and urban renewal. Dr. Gloria Jean Royster is a student of Tampa's black history. She revives the city's cultural prowess through guided tours of historic Central Avenue and Old Fortune Street. No other place I've lived in has this unique history of diversity. But much of it isn't evident. A diverse history many Tampa Heights newcomers likely aren't aware of. There's nothing there to indicate that those people walk that earth. But imagine that happening to Ybor City. Many worry the thriving entertainment district may be next in line for gentrification with the possibility of the next Ray Stadium coming here to Ybor and overshadowing the long-standing businesses that are in the area. A big part uh, of the discussions going on with the Rays in Ybor City is how do we blend this into Ybor, not overlay or smother or cover up what makes Ebor Ebor? Bob Rorlack of the Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce says half of private businesses in Hillsborough County are black or Hispanic owned, but account for just 5% of economic cash flow, forcing a balance between protecting homegrown businesses and promoting outside investors. There can be a natural friction or a rub that comes up, and it's got to be addressed right away to how do we work that together. Working together is the only way, Kroll says, to fight back against gentrification. His Tampa Heights Neighborhood Coalition works with other residents, developers, and the city of Tampa to move Tampa forward without losing sight of its past. People need to step up to the plate and say, I'm going to fight for this, this community over here that's at risk for displacement. Um, you just have to stay involved. That's the only way to help. In Tampa, I'm in-depth reporter Mason Morrow, ABC Action News.